I'm Amor Shante. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an entrepreneur, yes. uh, business person, uh, events organizer, CEO um, of another company called Oculus Media as well. Okay. Uh, just an all-round person who likes to have a good time. Okay. Yeah. You you had a job before, like a nine to five job, eh? Very long time ago. A very long time ago. You decided to move away from that and to drift into something else, completely something else. Yeah. It wasn't about events, right? No. You've been a marketer for a while. Yes. And an HR person as well. Yes. Why the move? Why the change? Uh, I think it's just identifying a need in the market uh, because I moved back here a long time ago. And when we initially moved back uh, to Dar, there was a shortage in daytime events or just basically events which were catering to a younger generation. So mm -hmm. it was something that we got into initially just to kind of cater to our own friends and then it like grew from there. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't specifically that we wanted to start an events company. Okay. But that was, that was the byproduct of doing something that we actually enjoyed doing. So is it like the main thing, not the only thing, but is it the main thing that you're doing right now apart from the other things that you used to do? Uh, we run several companies. Uh, it's a group of us. So we do obviously entertainment, which is the reality aspect of it. Uh, we're also in telecoms. Uh, and then we're also in media. Uh, and then we're also in security. What do you so, do in telecoms? Uh, distribution. Okay. Yeah, so I did distribution. I've been doing distribution for about six years. Okay. Yeah. So what do you distribute? Is it the lines, is it the cables? No, actually we have a company called Mobistock. Uh, it's what's called a consolidated vendor. Uh, and what we do is that we cater to the smaller shops that can't uh, have enough float to kind of distribute every single network. So we consolidate all of those into a platform and then they buy like one amount. Uh, so if you buy like 20 shillings, you can be able to sell to any different person who comes to your shop. So then that alleviates the need for a shopkeeper to have Airtel, Tigo, Zantel, uh, Smart separately. Okay. So that's the telecom side of it. And the other business? Uh, we do movie production. So we, did, we just did a movie last year called Homecoming. Homecoming. Uh, we did Mkwawa a few years ago. Uh, and we did a series called The Team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a guest a few months ago and she emailed a Momanga, I think some of you know her, yes. in the publishing industry. And one of the things that she talked about is um, doing too many things at the same time. Yeah. It can be result into a bad effect in your business. Yeah. And it's, in one way or another, it did result into that into her, yeah. into her. I don't know, does it affect you when you do too many things at the same time? Or do you litigate your things, for example, he and Asema and Kabidi Flani, this, she's, my wife's going to handle this, my other team's going to handle that. Yeah. Or do you stand left, right, center, forward, everything, whatever you do? No, I mean, I think with anything, if you try and manage everything too closely yourself, uh, that could be problematic. So we tend to delegate and empower people. So if somebody's in charge of a project, then they run that project themselves and report back to us as, man as senior management. Okay. So we kind of have a team that's very strong and able to kind of do the different industries. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to ask your age, but I'm going to skip that part. <laughs> now, they, they say that 70% of the youth, I think from 15 to 30 something, yeah. a lot of people in that age range, they're not employed. Yeah. And you decided to quit your job and employ yourself. Yeah. Was it a family initiative? Was it your own personal feeling? Was, did your wife tell you, Yo, I'm old. I don't understand what you're doing. I don't like you in a suit and tie. I want you to be in jeans, no more shirt. I want you to make people happy. Uh, I think it was more just identifying opportunity. Uh, if you identify mm. something that you feel passionate about, then you should just give it a try. Mm. You never know. I mean, if you're qualified and you have you know, your degrees, you can always go back to getting a job if it fails. Okay. Uh, but if you're committed to it, then you can always do it. Did you have a hard time looking from that transition? No. Uh, what you need to understand is, is that I've been back in Tanzania now for over 12 years. Years. And I've never held a job while in Tanzania, a nine to five while here. Okay. So I worked while I was in school and abroad, but locally I've never, I've never worked. It's just something that I decided that I didn't want to do. Now, I'm, I'm getting to know you more right now. Telling me that you've lived most of your life, right? Yes. So is it something that you gained from there that you decided to bring here? Do you think, for example, 
I, let me use myself as an example. I studied here all my life. Yep. If I decided to embark on that journey that she decided to take over yep. here, it, is it different as compared to a person that, for example, you who have lived all, all the way there, I've seen all the, <coughs> all the kind of things yeah. that you decided to bring here. Is it a plus? In a way, not re I don't think so. I think it's all about support. If you have a family that supports you and they're okay with you taking the leap of faith, then anybody can do it. Let me mix it up. Yeah. I, I'm seeing a lot of events. I, I for one, am also pl I plan a couple of events. Yeah. And most of, most of the other event planners, Kisingeli Singeli, Wapi, on a plan, Wapi, Wapi, but you decided to move all the way out of that route. And yeah. you said, you know what? I'm going to start with a small number of friends, yep. then I'm going to go there. Yep. So that's why I'm thinking, is it because of the exposure? And plus education? No, I think when it comes <coughs> to events, especially on the, on the event side of things, you need to identify something that's not being done. Mm -hmm. So you actually, I guess what they refer to as a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So if you started, if, you, if I was to go in and do... Uh, you know, to name somebody who does it really well, Grooveback, who yeah. do, you know, the old school parties on Peter, uh, Moore. Uh, Peter Moore and Kelvin <coughs> Teresa and his whole team. If I was to try and do that, everybody in the market would look at me and say, you know, this guy's crazy. Peter Moore is already doing it so well. Unless I was able to do something completely different mm -hmm. than that route, then it would be successful. But if I just went ahead and, you know, uh, since that's Grooveback and said, you know, it's Groove now and try to copy their formula, it will not be authentic. Okay. So I think it doesn't matter what industry it is, as long as what you're doing is authentic to you and what it is that you want to achieve, mm -hmm. is, is how I look at it. Now I'm looking at your marketing skills right now, I was reading your profile, it's quite extensive. Yep. So many skills that are lined up over there. And you, there's something known as event technology, I think a lot of you see it online. Yeah. And some people, unfortunately, they think, I've heard this notion from several people, that they think it's for kids. Yep. But you've been able to tap into that market. A lot of us, or a lot of other people that are doing events, they tend to advertise things on radio, TV, hard copy on a bang, up and up and up. I've seen it on radio, I've yeah. never seen it on TV, but you've been able to tap into that market. How do you do it? How do you do it? Yeah. And where is it going right now? Uh, I think for we out here, for us, first and foremost, we're, I, I guess you'd say, a social network kind of marketing strategy is what we take. Um, we don't believe in mass marketing just because of the target market that we're going for. Uh, if we were aiming for everybody, then it would be mass market. That's when we'll go for above the line advertising. Uh, for what we're trying to reach, we're trying to reach a very specific group of people. Uh, and then we also believe in that if somebody has a good experience at one of our events, then that will push them to tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I think the referral marketing is a good aspect that we usually take advantage of as well. So if you've been to one of our events, of which I know you have, next time you're coming, you're going to tell somebody else. Okay. Uh, and if both of you have a good experience, then that will kind of channel its way down. Okay. Um, as opposed to going above the line, uh, whether it's billboard or radio, for what it is that we're doing, you might hear the ad and then show up and it's not what you're looking for. So we, we don't want to take that risk. Okay. We'd rather build it slowly like we have for the last seven years than just, you know, expand to too many people who then cancel each other out. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at a lot of people over here, even outside this group. A lot of people want to do events. Yeah. A lot. And it could be different kinds of events. Yeah. The corporate events, social gatherings, even, even just calling your friends in the house. Sometimes it's a struggle. You call five, ten friends and only two show up. <laughs> Now, how, what is the basic outline process of making the best event out there? Sheesh. <laughs> um, I think the first and most crucial part of doing any event is the location. Mm. Um, if you don't have the right location, it will never work. Uh, and now, depending on your scale of event, then that's how better or how accessible the venue needs to be. Mm. So if a venue doesn't have parking, obviously you're gonna suffer. Um, if a venue is not laid out in order to you know, take the capacity that you want, you're gonna have a big problem. So first of all is the venue. Secondly, at least for us and what it is that we do is music. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then third is drinks and you know the rest is people having a good time okay uh, but a venue is, is, is very crucial okay yeah okay uh, venue selection is, is a big part where a lot of people make a mistake mm -hmm. yeah um, funny question I'm gonna ask a really interesting question I'm talking to you I you can tell a person who they are yeah. the way they talk the way they're polished so I imagine you come from a good family is it a plus that makes you um, tap into that market more or is it no no, I don't Wait, think so. Hold up, hold up. Yeah. If somebody, um, <laughs> oh, somebody I'm buying, let me, let me take myself as an example. Let me yeah. not use anybody else out there. Yeah. Because um, you know a lot of people. And yeah. I don't know if it's the background or whatever. But like, get out of the noise, you just come up and you do events. Yeah. If I come up, even if I have the right location, yeah. the right drinks, the right people, the right uh, hype person to yeah. hype the place up. Uh... I guess what I will say is the first event that we ever had, uh, which the jury is still out, whether it was Kunduchi Beach or at Karambezi, but the first event that we ever had, I think we only had 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like I always had a big crowd. It's just referral. So you build at it. It's not something that happens overnight. Mm. Uh, contrary to popular beliefs, people think events you can do one event, get a thousand people, you know, make hundreds of millions of shillings and that's it. If it was that simple, then I would have done three events and I would have been done with it a long time ago. Okay. Right? Okay. So it's just consistency. Mm. That's all it is. It's not about background. It's not about money. It's, it's, it's about consistency. Keep doing what you're doing over and over and over and make it better every time. And then that will kind of spread the word. Mm -hmm. That's it. Did you get any help from your parents? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the support so the the no it wasn't financial ah. it wasn't financial okay. uh, because when we started doing events they were free it, it was not a money making venture okay. it was mostly just for us to socialize okay. uh, but I did get support from my family as far as you know telling me that it's okay and giving me guidance because obviously they have a vast business background okay. Uh, yeah okay so how do you handle your budget in every event yeah in everything you you do how do you handle your budget as far as budgeting for mm. a gig for a gig we have templates mm. we have templates uh, I have a big team that makes sure everything works mm -hmm. uh, we make sure we check everything and check it again uh, preparation uh, there's a big misconception where people think if you do an <coughs> event you start the week of we plan six months in advance Okay. Yeah. So you have to plan. Because I'm thinking some of your events I know you do get sponsors, so you do get money out of that. Yeah. But you have different kinds of events, and I'm thinking does every event hold its own money, own account, own whatever? No, no, no. It's a holding company. So okay. you run it as a holding company, and then that company then kind of allocates funds according to the size of event. Okay. Because every event is an investment, so it's like a business venture. Okay. Some events make money, some lose. Okay. So, you know, mansion party is a lot bigger than, or the revenues from mansion party are a lot bigger than the revenues from brunching. Okay. Uh, so you can't look at them the same. You have to look at them independently. Mm -hmm. So your return on investment is lower. So you do less things for the smaller ones and more things for the bigger ones. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, I'm, I'm thinking, how do you evaluate and monitor your success, your growth, failure, whatever it is? Yeah. How do you do it? Uh, it's, there's some things that we do uh, as we out here that are not necessarily profitable, uh, but they're for brand building. Okay. Uh, and they're because they have a lot of people or some people who kind of like those events. Uh, like we have brunching, like I mentioned to you. Brunching is free. Uh, anybody can show up as long as they know that brunching is happening. So we don't make a revenue, we, we break even. Uh, so, and then you have something like Noir, uh, which Noir is free as well, but we have sponsors for that, so we make more money. Okay. So it just depends on, on, on the gig. Uh -huh. Now, do you, how big is your team? Uh, permanent, I think about 10. Uh, and then with freelance, it comes up to about 20, 22. About 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the worst thing to do when you're organizing an event? The worst thing you've ever done? And probably the worst, I can do or anybody The else. worst thing you can ever do. Uh, 
panic on the day of the event. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody online who on the day of the event starts saying, it's happening now, please come over, it's cool, everybody's here. That sends a negative message. So we never advertise on the day of the event. Wait, 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 hold up. So if you say it come up, it's, it's happening now, it's cool, everybody's here, that's bad? I thought that's good. What ten, no, what tends to happen is <laughs> if you're sitting somewhere else with your friends and you've seen a post that somebody is saying it's happening now, what are you going to do? Ah, it's probably not happening yet. Let's stay here for another hour. <laughs> like if you the music is loud. No, no, no. <laughs> As the event organizer, you shouldn't yeah. do that. Yeah. Let everybody else tell people that it's happening. Don't start saying on your social media or your uh, networks that it, it's happening now. Okay. Okay. At least not a call to action. You can post that the setup is done and that the place is looking beautiful, but don't try and pressure people to come. I think that's a crucial mistake people make. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I, I know your wife and I've seen her working. Yeah. Scratch the DJ kit about it. Yeah. So tell me, the, she's the light that fills up your street, right? Yeah. That much I know. Yeah. How much of a bigger influence is she in your life when it comes to this whole process? Uh, pretty much every single event or project that we've ever done tends to start with her approving it. Okay. And then it goes to the Rialche team. So, okay. uh, it's, we, will, we argue it out sometimes on what should go and what shouldn't, mm -hmm. but she tends to win most times, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> we so, had a guest up a few months ago, Chris Smokey. Yeah. It was, it, his wife was actually over there. Now everything, he's a, he's a psychologist, so everything that he says, so my wife knows everything, even the yeah. female clients that come to my office yeah. and they want to make a move, she knows. Yeah. So she know, y y your job is quite tedious and it's crazy sometimes. Yeah. Like you have to move back and forth and she's right over there, she's helping you. And I think there are other spouses out there, it could be a man, a woman, a man, and I don't know, she could be in your place, yeah. you could be in her place, but they don't support each other. Yeah. But I guess her support system is... That's, I mean, that's crucial. Even when we've had bad events, you know, she's the one that's there to make sure that, you know, I don't, I don't you? give up. Of course she does. Mm. She's the... She used to be the main Riace DJ. Now it's DJ Vasily, of course. <laughs> um, but DJ Vasily learned a lot from her and she learned a lot from DJ Vasily. But she's still our go-to backup DJ. Okay. Yeah. What do you do in your... In your spare time because you do a lot of things every other week yeah what do you do in your spare time we usually tend to link up all the weache guys and go out like the whole team so we tend to keep to ourselves pretty much mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's as surprising as it is we i don't know that many people we you don't no not really <laughs> <laughs> I, um, apart from the sponsors, do you have any other ways of getting your money? Apart from the entrance as well? Donors, grants, or people that just no. believe in you and say, you know what, we want to invest in you? No, pretty much it's uh, revenue from the bar, sponsorship, and entrance. Mm -hmm. So it's self sustaining. We don't have any grants or anything. Okay. Yeah. Do you plan on taking whatever event or whatever business, whatever holding outside this country? We have done stuff outside of Tanzania. Um, we've done parties in Nairobi. Okay. We've done parties in South Africa. Wow. We've done parties in Mozambique. Yeah, we did do Mozambique. Yes, uh, I think that's it. And we have a party in Paris, 21st in Paris. of July. Yeah, Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> that's big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's big, that's big. Yeah. Now, how's the reception over there in Mozambique, South Africa, everywhere else you go? Uh, I think <clears throat> a good time is universal. Uh, if, you, if you provide people with the, with the right mm -hmm. music, uh, you know, energy, and uh, I tend to be the MC, it, it, it works out. The reception has been really good, especially like uh, places that you, know, you have the right mindset. And you have the right connection, my like South Africa. Yeah. How do you get the Paris gig? Sorry for asking. I'm crying too much in your life, but it's my job. Yeah. Par Paris Fashion Week, that's what you yeah. said, right? Yes. How do you get a gig all the way from Tanzania, Mashkolo yeah. Magin, yeah. and you move to <laughs> Paris? How do you do that? Uh, through networking. Uh, okay. When we travel, you, you meet people, you tell them what it is that we're doing in Tanzania. In turn, they 
send DJs here, we send you know DJs there. If, if there's a if we're out traveling, uh, and then when you network like that, after some time, people trust you. So it's you know them having faith. Um, it's a good friend of mine called Brian Biget. Uh, he owns a club called Jungle in Paris. So I've known him for four years. So through professionally and personally, then you know we agreed that it's time we did a party together. So we're doing it. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Tell me about the mode of your business. As far as the fact is that determined this this is gonna be my mode for like ten years. Yeah. This is gonna be my mode for five years, seven years right now you've been running, right? Yeah. What's the key factor that's been running your what's the bolt, what's the nut, what's the whatever oil that you're applying? Uh, apart from the referral that you've been talking about? I think innovation. Um, and I think it also comes down to knowing when to walk away. Uh, if, if you can't be doing the same thing for seven years and it will stay fresh. So you always have to change. Uh, you always have to look at the market. Like Whatever industry you're in, try and read as much as you can. Try and like research as much as you can. I mean, I'm in, we're in DAR, but if you ask me or my team about what parties are happening next weekend pretty much all over the world, we would know. Not because that we're going, but because we're keeping an eye on what's happening globally. So when trends change, you can change as well. Um, when we started, daytime was the, was the crucial thing. So group theory was a daytime party. But that era kind of changed. Um, so that's when we went to night. Okay. Uh, we out here then was born and then we started doing like noir uh, mansion party. And then that trend changed again to day parties. So then we came back to brunch. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it's always just trying to research and innovate. That, okay. that will always tell you what to do. I'm inspired. Yeah. When you're talking to a person, I'm going to be next week in a video, you can event Ghana, Chiflani, Mkwaflani, Wapi na Wapi. That means that you're doing your research thoroughly. You have to, and it's free. I mean, we all internet. have internet. Yeah. yeah, you just need to go. <clears throat> if, if you're a stylist, then, you know, you need to know what stylists are doing. If you know, if you're doing events like we're doing events, we need to know what events are happening mm -hmm. in order to be inspired. You look and you see what they're doing and then you can do the same, so, yeah. I talk to a lot of event planners, eh? And sometimes they tell me, I'm like, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm tired. Yeah. I can't do it, I can't do this anymore. They choke out, the sponsors are messing me up, people are not showing up, Lo, it's, and it's a zigzag. Yeah. Lo, it's good, the next day it's bad. Yeah. Have you reached your breaking? Have you ever reached your breaking point for someone? You know what? I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Mm, obviously, there are frustrating days. There are days when you know, like uh, everyone from my team knows every event that we do. If it's a daytime event that starts at twelve, by two thirty, I'm asking him, "Do you think people are gonna come?" <laughs> like, they all know. They all run away from me. You know. And if it's a night event, if it starts at eight by ten o'clock, I'm asking, "Do you people? Do you think people are gonna come?" Uh, I think that fear is, is, is what kind of helps you, you know, you, you take that and you make sure that even if 10 people show up, mm -hmm. don't give up, make sure those 10 people have the best time of their lives, okay. you know, a lot of people, they you, you do an event and you're expecting 100 uh, and then, you know, 30 people show up and you think that that's not enough, so you're not happy with it. But if 30 people show up and they have a good time, trust me, the next one, they're going to tell another 30. So I think it's just keeping motivated. It's actually the same question I was asking myself. Yeah. <clears throat> How many people are going to show up? Yeah. It's 7. It's 6.30. How many are coming? What no, are you all, yeah, <laughs> you always have to just... And then you start posting on social media. Mm. It's happening now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then you start posting on social media. It's happening now. Okay, <laughs> I have done it. I've done it several times. Uh, we do panic, like it. We do panic, but at the end of the day, you get the job done. No, you can't. You can't panic. Like, you got to stay calm. So I'm, I'm thinking you got a large number of people. You got ten people on board. You've hired like any. Yeah. Okay, some of them are twenty on board. They are so security. Okay. Um, you know, like uh, bartenders. Mm. You can't hire them full time because we're not doing gigs every day. Are you passing down? How should I say this? But are you telling people about these are the robes even I or are, is it like a party then we're done? Like any we're not like predecessors, the people that are gonna come in your route and and say come on, are you any name? 
one day I might be gone, I might decide to go do parties in the Bahamas, yeah. and I would like something to be stable and consistent in this country. Yeah. So I mean, I'll change your protégés, and you're going to be doing this job. Do you have those kind of people come like a trading, a seminar, Yeah, whatever? I think everybody, every, everybody uh, in our team kind of handles everything. So mm. everybody knows. And I mean, there are people in our team who do separate events. And we all consult and help them out when they're doing events. So it's not, you can't, no, no one man is an island. So you know, I've you're seen always, events dying because yeah. of that one person leaving. Yeah. And the event just dies. If you don't empower your people again, then I think you have those problems. Okay. But if, if you make sure your team is solid, then you're good. And we have people who come in and decide they want to leave and they want to do other things. Um, okay. Because we out here at the end of the day is a collective. Okay. So it's not just events. We have musicians, we have artists, we have designers, we have uh, photographers. So it's basically whoever is in the field that fits into what we're doing, then we partner up together. Okay. Yeah. Now this is going to be for most of you who attend Leos because when you are yeah, they're going to miss out on this part. What's the biggest thing that you're planning right now? It's going to shock a lot of us. Makamisima, you plan six months ahead. Yeah. If we can ask that much, how, stretch your wings. How, so, how soon is this airing? Ah, <laughs> good question. In a month, it's going to be aired. In a, like month, in, a, in, a month, take a in a month, in a month, then I can tell you guys that, like for this Saturday, uh, we've announced Group Theory, mm. but we have Neil Jackson who's flying in from New York City. Okay. But that's not going to be announced probably until Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so good. that's a short-term one that I can I can give. Long-term, we can tell you about who or what you're going to be doing. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> really? I can't. You don't put by the end of the event. I to can't. Longer, I can't. So there are a couple of people up are sitting now and there are a lot of people are planning, they're thinking. And when I they can't tap into this market, like I said before, is there still a chance? Is there still an open space vacant? What should there's, we do? There is always room for something fresh. Like there's always you know, people always ask me like what event uh, what should I do if it comes to event? And I always tell them like, there's still, is how many four million people in Dark? Five. Five million people. Mm. Any event that I've done, I've never gone over a thousand people. So there's always room for you to fill something for somebody else. Okay. So it's just identify what's unique to you, and stick by it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's the okay to you? What's the biggest advice? I'm not gonna police Yeah. What's the biggest advice you can leave us with today? Um, I think pretty much whatever industry or job somebody is doing, uh, just keep at it. You know, don't take failure as, as, a, as a deterrent. Um, I think a lot of us sometimes get, you know, um, deterred by failure. Uh, as long as the concept is still good and you haven't failed from a crucial point of view as far as the concept, keep doing it. Okay. Yeah, it just takes time. Mm. Yeah, one more, one more. Since you were a corporate man, up yeah. now you're a normal guy. Would you ever go back into that scene? I'm still partially in corporate. Mm. Yeah, in, in in events, I mean, you have to deal with global brand managers. You have to deal with country directors. You have to deal, um, you know, uh, with peop different people with different corporate backgrounds. So you always you always have that aspect, but as far as me going back to a nine to five being hired, no, <laughs> not doing it. Ah, they're gonna use like his wish again. I think. Do you? Because I imagine he works with his wife. Yeah. Now, you guys basically talk about the same conversation. Do you do you talk like normal couples? Yeah. You saw like his wish, man. In what sense? In, in the sense, come about. <laughs> Do you because <laughs> your way of relaxing Peter you get what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah. No, I mean you, you have to compartmentalize, right? You have mm. to you have to have no time and place. off Kabisa, no people, no events, no phone calls, it's just us. I mean, that you do when you go on vacation. That's the only time you go on happens. vacation. Yes. Hey, you do. You have to. Oh. You have to take some time off. Okay. We just got back from Mombasa with the whole We Out Your team. So. 
Now this is the crew I'm you want to be in, right? <laughs> ah, my friend, the whole crew went to Mombasa. <laughs> now that's when you know come the business is very lucrative and it's making something, it's doing something. I'm going to thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm very delighted with what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Very, very happy. Now I see a lot of eager faces up. I'm not going to record it, I'm record it, I'm going to record it. Guys, um, it's been a great, great interview. To me, i a couple of things. And if you have a question, if you've learned something, or if you'd like to add something or to share more, please number to Lisa. And while you're asking, please make it short and precise. So, so where's the first question? <laughs> okay, how do I start? Do you have another Okay, so I was telling Sarah before you got here that, yeah, I've heard of your parties before, actually a lot, yeah. but I've, I don't know you. Yeah. And it was very interesting to see the man behind it all. But what I want to know is how do you create, you know, when you, like the kind of market that you have, it's a certain clientele. Yeah. And you're not really a very social person. How do you get that, at least the, the startup, uh, please them enough for them to go and tell other people, but that first clientele. How do you reach that? How do you reach that uh, that that type, that type of clientele? How do you attract that? Being behind the scenes as you are. Yeah. Uh, I think it just it comes down to products. If the product is good, people will talk about it. You know, if 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 when you start, then you, you don't try and please too many people. So you, if you start pleasing a few people in the beginning, that will grow. So there's no shortcut. I think that the answer that I'm trying to say is <clears throat> there's no shortcut to building a network. Um, it takes time. That's all it does. But, and you have to keep doing it either that good or better. You know, you'd always strive to become better or whatever it is. I mean, we still think our events have, you know, a lot of shortcomings um, as far as execution. But, you know, every week or every month we try and, you know, get better at whatever it is that we're doing. So I think it's just repeating and making the process better. Perfect. Yeah. Are you satisfied? Yes. All right. Well done. Oh, by the way, please, eh, when you ask a question, tell us who you are, what you do. So, what is your name? And the question. Please stand. Did you say stand? Stand, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Voice projection. I don't know if you Okay, Nancy, sit down. I'm not going to Uh, on why I decided to move back, uh, it just at the time, or it still is, uh, there's a lot of opportunities here. There's a lot of things which can be done uh, which are not being done or haven't been done. Uh, so for me, it looked like a, like, a good, like a good opportunity. So I said I'd come back, give it a few years. If it works out, I stay. If it doesn't, then I could always travel again, right? So, and so far, so good uh, it's been able to work out. Um, as far as the events internationally, um, if you see the way we're set up uh, in our marketing and the way we present everything that we do, our followers are not just necessarily from Tanzania. So if we do post something, sometimes like if we do, we go to Nairobi and you post that we're in Nairobi, then everyone that follows us in Nairobi then will be interested in the gig. So we're not necessarily targeting um, only the Tanzanian population that's in a place. So it will also be for the other people who are internationally there. Uh, and then sometimes what you do is you partner up with uh, DJs who are already there, wherever it is that you are. Um, so if it's Nairobi uh, or you know in Paris when we go, then we'll work with a local DJ from there to add to the to the pool. Yeah. Good. 
More hands given? Madam Singer. <laughs> Remind us your name and what you do, eh? Okay. <laughs> fast, fast. Yeah. But who is the mind or would you allow to be the mind behind your things like noir, like yes. uh, branching? Who is your mind? Or what makes you decide? Second, um, second shante is your sister. The wife. Margaret, he gave you a black look. <laughs> they don't look alike. Why? Psycho. I have seen her in uh, the movie production of the Hong Kong. And I want to know do you let her only be the producer? Do you know her? Do you also do that also? Like, does she also come here and do this? Like, how does that work out? Because I do not see you in the Hong Kong movie as producing as much as I see. First one, we'll go, we'll go first one, one, who's behind yeah. uh, First one, as far as the names and the concepts, uh, we all work as a team. So uh, somebody will propose a concept, and then I'll kind of champion individually or as a group talking to the rest of the guys to see like what they think about it. Um, and then if there's a consortium of all of us who agree, then we'll, we'll run with it. Um, so it's not just one person that kind of decides. Uh, and some of it is inspired by uh, some of our other friends. Uh, so then that will be based on that. Um, so it's just group, we all work as a group. Uh, as far as production, uh, the production side of it, if you read the homecoming post at the bottom, uh, I did produce on that movie. Uh, me and Seko are business partners, as well as her being my wife. So we kind of work together on, on all projects. It's not, um, it's not like she does this and I do that. Uh, we sit in the same office, so. <laughs> it kind of, you know, we, we, we wear different hats at different times. Uh, and as far as events, um, I think Ultra is something very specific. Uh, same as Burning Man or Coachella. That's not the direction that we take. Um, that's more to do with concerts. Uh, we've seen them, we've, we've dabbled in doing something similar to the concert direction when we brought Liquid Deep to Tanzania. Um, but it was not a direction that we wanted to take uh, because then you're dealing with a mass as opposed to a targeted market. Um, so then you have to have entertainment that kind of fits a different set of people. Uh, a, like a wide spectrum of people, which is you know another skill set that we don't have. Um, so we tend to stick to the skill sets that we do have, uh, which generally doesn't go over a thousand two hundred people um, for our larger events. So no, ultra is not a direction that we, we we're looking at taking for now. <coughs> Who knows? <laughs> Are you happy, Mem? Cindy. Worst experience we've had managing an event? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot, but um, I think the one that stands out of recent times is uh, having a sponsor pull up two weeks before an event that was planned in Zanzibar. And we dealt with it because I think you forgot to ask me or you didn't ask, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, Ouch. The number, two, the number two rule of events. Okay. Uh, never plan events based on 
sponsor financial backing mm. because that's very dangerous. Anything can happen. Okay. Um, you know, a CEO might get changed. You know, a brand manager might not believe in that project, want to change that funds to something else. Okay. Uh, your execution plan might not fit to what they're trying to do. So you know, there's always a thousand reasons why that might switch. So you should always have enough cash to cover your expenses for for the gig. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to do that and it was quite painful. But You cancelled? No, no, no. You never cancel a gig. As long as it's announced, you never cancel. Okay. You always proceed. Okay. Unless it's... I don't know. No, you never cancel. <laughs> yeah. But you know, December is most recent, eh? so I was thinking a little bit was supposed to plan to go ahead. No, this is New Year's. Uh -huh. Yeah, this okay. past New Year's. Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. So it was very painful. <laughs> I can feel the pain. But, uh, yes. Shout out to the sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so my first question is personal. What happened to my party? That was my favorite reality of party. It just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I'm talking you. to you directly, it's all that you need to bring that. That's one. <laughs> That's the first question. So okay. That. Um, the second one is. Uh, the brands that you guys collaborate with, they kind of are the luxury brands. Like yeah. you don't just collaborate with like Chibi or something, right? Yeah. So how do you do you ever like say no to a brand? Like if someone if a brand comes to you and they need your clientele and they say you want to collaborate, if it doesn't align with you know what you guys are trying to bring to the market, do you say no to that or do you dabble on about like starting a separate event? Just for that kind of is that something that you're thinking about, or just focusing on one type of market? And the, the third question is, in terms of the Tanzanian market, um, you know, we're not necessarily like Monaco or New York or even South Africa, where the purchasing power is kind of big. You know, so you have a lot of millionaires and all these things. In Tanzania, there is a perception that we're poor, like we don't really can really afford it. Is it true? Do you think that the, pur the purchasing power, especially for luxury brands in this country or in Darsalaam, is not as high as in other cities, or is it the same? But people have not really like, you know, publicized that. So, in terms of like the question is mainly around the luxury branding, like is that yeah. something that you think can expand, or is it now just stuck in this niche market that you guys have? Okay, uh, Mansion Party to answer your questions and I'll try to do it in order. As far as Mansion Party, that's probably going to come back at some point. Um, it, it went away because it was just, it was time. Uh, we had done, we've done seven of them, so we had to kind of switch it up. So it might come back in a different format. Uh, we never wanted to do it until the point where, you know, when you hear Mansion Party, you think, oh, I don't want to go to that. So, you know, you got to leave when you're on top. We never shut down when, you know, the, the, the train is, is sinking or what have you. Um, and as far as the brands that we do work with, um, I think as far as we out here is concerned, we, it's not, we're pushing prominence of being rich. That's never why we wanted to do it. Uh, even Mansion Party, the reason, most people don't know why we started with Mansion Party. Mansion Party was started because of aspiration. Uh, Mansion Party was supposed to inspire you that you're going to this house that, you know, is worth a million dollars and you get to spend the day in there and seeing how these people who can build a million dollar house live. So that was supposed to be, oh, okay, in five years, 10 years, 20 years, I am going to own this house. So the same with the brands that we work with. Granted, we might not be able to afford the top of the line of whatever luxury brands that we're working with, but it's supposed to inspire you. So for us, it's more of an aspirational aspect. So no matter where you're coming from, if you come to our event, if that really premium brand that you've seen you know, internationally or you've seen in magazines, if you can't afford a borrow worth of it, you, know, you might be able to get a, around. But at least you will feel inspired that, you know what, I want to live my life to this standard. So that's why most of our events, out of the five, six events that we have, three are free. So it's not a question of limiting people. Um, in most of our events, if you come to them, we don't have VIP section unless we have a capacity issue. So it's, we've, we, we set up We Out Here as an aspirational aspect. So, and if a brand that doesn't fit what it is that we're trying to do approaches us, 
you have to know how to say no. Um, we've been approached by brands with big budgets, but it doesn't fit what we want to do. Um, and it doesn't fit that aspirational aspect that we're, we're pushing. So if something doesn't fit what we're trying to do, we say no. So you say no to money? You have to. How much are we talking? <laughs> oh, good amounts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> good amounts. <laughs> good amounts. You have to, because you know, you have to remember, um, we've had brands which will come over and try and change the core of what it is that we are. Okay. So then you got to weigh it out. Should I take this money for today? But when that budget year is over, are they going to come back? What am I left with? Am I still left with a brand? Or am I left with money that I've already spent trying to now build back my core customers? So at that point, you know, you sit with the team and we say, this is not for us. Father, do you put your parties or events on YouTube or any other media? Apart from Instagram, please. No, we do Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and our website. That's website. it. Yeah. How long? How long is it when it's uploaded on the website? Uh, about a week. How long, as in the length, the length of the video? Oh, we only do one video. Yeah, they we need only experience. We only yeah. need. We only do short videos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because the experience, you can't really capture it. You have to be there. But you know when I see parties where, where's this famous place? There's a Spain, somewhere in Spain. Uh -huh. Ibiza. When I when I see videos and things, I say, ah, only if. Mm. Now I want to feel the same experience when I look at them because I, I felt that way when I've been to your parties. So I, I want other people to also experience the same thing when yeah. they see the videos. Hey, that's a good recommendation. We'll take it. We'll see. <laughs> Cindy. Uh, ah, oh. <laughs> Oh right, the aspect of purchasing power. I think I think people can do anything. I I I strongly believe, depending on how you market to people, um, they can find the funds. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. It's like some people don't drink <laughs> champagne, but if they come to the gig and you know they're inspired enough, eh. they'll buy champagne. Okay. Right. Okay. Or sparkling wine, depending. You look very doubtful. You? You're very skeptical. You have this skeptical look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Um. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I get back to you, madam? Hold your thought. Maki, Lydia has a question. Sorry. Congratulate you for building amazing brands. More mansion parties, I consider those as brands because you're targeting different groups of people. So that's amazing. Thanks. And my question is, um, how do you handle sponsor relationships? Um, for example, you did say you had a sponsor that pulled out an event. So uh, on your side, it was kind of like, you know, you wave a little bit, but then you go back on your horse. And so how would you handle, or if it has a card already, how do you handle sponsor relationships where you, they have paid or sponsored your event and then the numbers do not add up? So how do you deal with that? And how do you deal with the sponsors? Um, I think when it comes to events first and foremost, if you're having your first event, try and have it without a sponsor, just so you have a history, you know okay if you can have two if you have enough capital to have two events without a sponsor that's even better but if you can have one at least without then you have a forecast of numbers you have a proof of concept so when you have an event where you're getting a sponsor on board then you slash your numbers by half <laughs> and you tell them you know if you got 50 people you say i'm expecting 25. Okay. so at least that way you're kind of backed i think it's it's dangerous on both parties um, if it's your first gig and you're sponsored um, because you then you're not sure of what you're getting and they're not sure of what they're getting yeah I, I think that's how we usually handle it we never do our first event with a sponsor you don't have three questions with? you should uh, Cindy uh, your same question anybody else I think there were more hands up but don't feel shy you man oh uh-huh
considering like like what you say frivolous spending, such as like going to parties and like going to money to liquor. Yeah. So right now with general rules is kind of changing compared to the year. Yeah. So you think that that is going to like spark different type of events that are not being held in this country or do you think what do you think? Um I think if you have value, you, you're okay. I think if you, stand, if you don't stand for anything, then you, you're in trouble. Um, I think even when, on times where people don't have that much to spend, then they're very price conscious and um, selective on what they go to. So I think now is the time where you know, all of us in the events industry to make sure that you're giving more value um, than what you were doing ever before. Uh, so that way the consumers can separate the real events from the you know the people who are just doing a one-off event. I think the the people who are kind of dedicated and are giving more value, real value, will be okay. Yeah. <coughs> more hands. It's done. Eh? Very good. Eh, no, no, no. More hands. Uh, oh. Brothers, my brother, brothers. I mean, you guys have been quiet. Karibu. Your name, now what you do, and everything else. So, eh? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Hi. 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 Uh, ideally, for us, it would be to go global. Um, if we can do, if we can have a schedule that you know moves around the world, that would be that would be the the, the the epitome of success as far as events. Not necessarily just with us in Tanzania, but to have another team that can kind of have a party somewhere else, but then building up on the brand that we have here. Um, so, if we can if we can have a global brand in ten years, that would be that would be pretty cool. Yeah, no problem. Santi. There was another hand up, huh? Oh, what? Ah, my brother, brother. How many? How many? Competitors come. Oh, there's always competitors. Um, we have, I mean, there's a lot of competitors in the, in the industry uh, and a lot of copycats. Um, but, <laughs> no, they are. It's, it's, it's not uh it's good no it's good for the industry it is it is it is, it is. yeah it is so there's, there's lots of competitors so that's why you always have to keep fresh right yeah so if in who's any your industry who's your main uh, competitor huh who's your main competitor who's our main competitor yeah as far as uh, whatever you're doing maybe on a saturday especially this saturday <laughs> we don't, you see what i will tell you Mm -hmm. in this race that is events yeah. if you look left and right you'll never go for it like you just go okay. plan your schedule make sure you have a good product make sure you're solid in what it is that you're doing and do it if you start waiting on what somebody else is going to do then that is not that means you're in a community industry which at the end of the day there's no point in being in business speaking of which now you have, I've been through a process of sorts come back you have an event that day, and somebody else has a big event to your sequel, and you say, yeah. you know what, let me just back down. Yeah. I can't do this, I can't compete in a fact. Yeah. Has, has it ever reached a point out where somebody you don't look left or right, you just go forward? Yeah. Like in America, you say, you know what, I can't do this. Learn your machoma, which yeah. machoma is on Saturday. Yeah. But my people can also go there as well. Yeah. Should I just stop? No, but let's go back to what I did ask you. You said there's five million people, and mm. there's enough of us to go everywhere. Yeah. Right? Hi. Until until one person has <laughs> five million people, there's room for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Um wait. Who is this? A few minutes ago. Well, there's, a, there's a guy in the back. There's a guy, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get back to you, don't worry. My brother. Sorry, my question is now a little bit long. Okay. I actually tried to do this. Can you try to make it sure you look precisely? Must it's gonna be long. 
please. Can you shorten it? Okay, please. please. Yeah, I try to do it best. Okay. And the question you asked him mm. about what made him to be so successful. The answer consistency. Actually, to me, I feel like that's not the answer I really wanted to hear. Because he's my idol. I feel like I'm the bad and he's the good. He did the things that I wish to do. Yeah. I currently stopped doing events because I didn't do any, any of them successfully. And we were probably not I did almost 20 events. Yeah. With the 20 events, we got nothing. Then I said, okay, my age is going up, so I, I have to get a job. I didn't want to be hired. Yeah. But I said, okay, it's time to get a job. Yeah. Get a job. Now I'm working for somebody. Yeah. You working for yourself is so good. Yeah. But the consistency part, actually, when you try 20 events, yeah. there are kids who are trying to do something like you. Yeah. They are starting out. What's the power behind the consistency? Yeah. What did you do that get to get to drive them yeah. and reach to the point that you are now? I think that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> as much as it is about consistency, you have to review whatever it is that you do. After every event, you have to look at what went wrong. You can't have an event and because you made money and think it was perfect. If you think, oh, if you lost money and you think, okay, it was a, it, it was a loss because we lost money. You know, some events, we've had events where, you know, we had oversight. There was only one toilet for the females, right? Guess what? Halfway during the night, all the girls are leaving because if, you know, they couldn't have, they couldn't, it's one line and it's a long line, so people are going somewhere else. So then we took a hit because if they went somewhere else and somebody calls them, then, you know, <coughs> we've had events where the sound system was set up wrong. So when you're done, you sit, you sit with your team and you decide, okay, what was wrong? We've had events, you know, whether it was a Friday event that we moved to Saturday. So I would have to know what type of events you did that were 20, what target market it was, what was the entrance. Um, there's a lot of factors. So you always have to review whatever it is that you're doing, not just in events and anything. Yeah, I think, I think the most crucial thing is to evaluate. <clears throat> yeah, make sure you evaluate and review. What's your name again? Oh, my name is Iman. Are you satisfied with the answer? So consistency to say that on gets a point. Are you okay with it? Oh, there's an yeah, there's an aspect of luck, of course. Okay, okay. Of course. There's a lot of luck. Okay. There's a lot of luck. A lot of luck. Trust. <laughs> now, I think we'll open up more after the session. But yeah. a lot of luck. vocal about it. Melda. I've dodged rain. <laughs> Yeah. Because as an aspiring engineer, I'm wondering where you put your kind of capital. Was it your savings? Um, from your last job? Or you know, was it kind of something that you took from someone? How did you start? The first event, um, if I remember correctly, the first like formal event that we did, uh, we did a deal with Kunduchi Beach, where. We agreed people. to huh? seventeen people. Yeah, it was it was about it was about maybe maybe thirty, 30. Tw like 20, 30. Like it was it was it was it was not very big. So the deal we did a deal with them that we would split uh, <coughs> revenue from the bar, um, less whatever it is that we spent, uh, and we lost a lot of money that day. <laughs> <laughs> But that was how we made the first event. And then after that, uh, I got a loan from my brother, Rashid. <laughs> Is he here, huh? Okay, wait, wait. No, I had to give him a shout out. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it the only question, though? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, sorry. Just add, was that the only loss you made? Oh, we do losses all the time. You just have to keep doing it. That's why you have. That's why we have five different brands. So one might lose a little bit of money. You just you have to leverage your loss, right? So it might cost you a hundred dollars to do the event. So for us, a loss is considered if you just make back the hundred dollars that you did to execute, uh, or you might make back ninety dollars as opposed to you know your four hundred that you put in. So it's a question of leveraging your your losses. <coughs> So then you do a gig which is bigger, and then that one might make 200. So next time, you see how it goes? 
So you always have to just leverage your wins and losses. Shoot. I think education is important in, in, as far as for critical thinking and decision making. Um, I think it's important. I think it's very important. I think that gives it gives you a, it gives you. There's some people who it, it comes to them naturally, where that's why some people can drop out and be successful. Um, and then there are people like me who needed to learn, uh, needed to learn how to analyze problems. Uh, you needed to learn how to do a marketing plan. You needed to learn how to leverage your risk. You need to you know so. To some people it's natural, but I think for me and most people, uh, I had to be taught. So I think it's important. So would you advise people who are still in school, like right now, who look at your brand and they, they aspire to do Yeah, if it's based on what they're looking at and what it is that I have done, stay in school. If, if it's something else that they want to do in their industry, they can decide. But speaking on my own experience, um, yeah, my education back, my educational background is very crucial. Yeah. So. So. Okay. Lydia. Yeah, one more question. Yes. Um, say your first event here made a lot. Yes. Make revenues from the bar. Yes. So what did you do differently at the next event? After we lost money on the first event because of the revenue from the bar. Mm -hmm. Uh, I learned never to let my friends have open bills. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to JJ. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll finish the video. Huh? <laughs> We're gonna have a tough time with that one, but yeah, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting questions, brother. And I realized, actually, you come out. You're gonna have a lot of questions for him. Yeah. I don't know. Look, a few guys are asking questions. I don't know why. So you, Raheem, the main man. Um, my question is, when you start your business, um, if you have teams and if you have teams, how do you keep the morale? Like, let's say you do a press events, you didn't make any money. But yeah. But how do you? Uh, I think for us it's honesty. I think we always just try and be honest with each other. Like you know, we'll, we'll, we have a lot of meetings. Mm. Yeah, where we talk and say, yeah, that didn't go so well, but at least we have next time. And then you know, so you, I think it's open communication. I think if you try and lie about what position you're in as a group, then you have problems. But if you're if you're open to your team and you say, you know, what should we do differently, then it becomes a lot easier. Um, so. Okay. Man, any more questions? Yes. Okay. Crispin, eh? Yeah. Crispin. My name is Crispin and I'm currently trying to start the company. Okay. Uh, I would like to know from you um, the behavior from the traders for the people who want to do your team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think as far as the team that we all have, or you know, the group that we are together, I think we're very like like-minded. Um, but at the same time, we're individuals, so everybody kind of brings. You gotta have people around you who are, you know, very smart and very good at whatever it is that they do. So then, if you all then come together, then you're stronger. Uh, so I think with us, I've, you know, we've been blessed that everyone who's in the team kind of brings something to it. So at the same time, we're like-minded. Uh, and then the second part you asked, how do you? Or how do you keep it motivated, you asked, right? Um, I think it's, you know, again, just being honest and 
making sure they know whatever it is that we're going through. So, you know, when times are good, they know. When times are bad, they know. Yeah? Yamani, is everybody happy? Now, one last question, Marco. We are about to finish. One last question, Tarusu, if it's possible. So, some of you guys are shy, but uh, thank you very much. Amon. Thank you guys for having me. We, we're happy to have you, Leo. Wait, before you go, we always we come with gifts. That's oh, what we do. I get a gift? Yes, you do. <laughs> thank you, you get a better t-shirt than that. Anyway, we always give out a gift and it's hold a t-shirt. Hold on, hold on, you gotta get the brand out. Uh -huh. Instead of Brian, there you go. Mr. Bike 15. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. It's not for me, it's for him. Anyway, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for coming. Guys. No, thank you guys so much. And thank all of you for making the time to come and see, you know, and hear. Mm. And if anyone has any questions that they want on the mic, just let me know.